How are you legends? Welcome back to the channel. In this one we're going to be going through our Saturday night games. Sorry I didn't upload yesterday, the uh, the wedding got the best of me, but here we are with the uh, the dogs and the raiders and wow, when, when head's going to roll if the raiders lost in this one. Obviously a bunch more Symbians, Papa Lee getting, uh, getting sent off in this one to go along with uh, two other send-offs for the, for the week. So let's get into this. Let's actually start with uh, Wateen Zalesniak. He's actually averaging 44.6 for the year, which is actually incredible for outside backs in the dogs team considering you've got you know Corey Allen who's scored pretty well in the past Kotrick is someone who's been you know a keeper in the in the wing full acquisition in the past and, and they're scoring terribly for for Dallin to come out and score really well I think is um yeah you know, really really good effort it's probably going to be a bit too expensive to try and pick him up after their buy in round 13 but I don't think many many other people would have him but there it is there um Smitty 62 in his 80 minutes again not someone we would probably want to target has obviously just gained 23k and he's only 322, but with their buyer coming up, he's not something you look to target, even if you know, even if he does continue to get uh, big minutes. Curtis Scott's an interesting one. He finally scored well and got 58, and we don't really want to talk about him too much. Obviously, both uh, teams here do not play in round 13, so uh, that's that one there. A lot of people had Georgie Williams at the start with 57. He obviously missed a couple of games and hasn't scored as well in those few weeks, but a 57 is good to see him back playing well. Uh, Corey Harrow and I with 57 did pick up a try this game and just just much better on his base stats. You know, 49 points in base uh, to go along with a few tackle breaks and a try gives you 57. So if you picked him up a few weeks ago, that 57 is really going to help you. And yeah, we, we spoke about that 30 odd he got a few weeks ago that would kind of stifle his money making. You can see it, it has stopped him a little bit as he's played, what, four games now to make four, uh, 76k. So this 57, if he picks up another 50, his prices will start, you know, his, his price increases will start rolling over nicely. So yeah, a, a nice one there with a lot of the second rowers, with the edge players and, and, and our middles there scoring pretty poorly this week in the 30s and you know, having CHM would have helped you out a fair bit. And similar with Loki Thompson with 56, again, 68 minutes, so playing massive minutes. And if he continues to do this, he's going to be averaging mid-50s all year and is still another 50K undervalued at least. So um, again, someone that if you're playing head-to-head, -head, I think you can you can take the plunge and pick him up as I think he's going to be really consistent. You know, there's not many middles there that are playing big minutes and you can see why someone like Toe Harris is scoring really well in his 80 minutes through the middle and a little bit on the edge. So yeah, Thompson doing well there. Starling. Now this is a really interesting one. He's still only, he's still 475k. He's, he's not that expensive yet, and it's interesting to see how they're going to use him and Hodgson's because you know he comes on and plays. Where's the minutes on him? Uh, so 35 minutes for Hodgson, but he didn't actually take any minutes off Starling. I'd imagine Hodgson's minutes increase as the season goes along, but if if Starling can play 80 minutes, then he's going to get back close to his uh what was he 675 679k. Uh, was his starting price at the beginning of the year after what he did last year. And you see every game he's played big minutes this year, he has scored really well. So he's someone that is very interesting as a pickup this week because, yes, you miss him for round 13, but will his price rises and his scoring over the next bunch of weeks at 475k, will that will that propel you up the ranks? And, you know, is he going to make, what have we got, three weeks? 11, no, 11 and 12, sorry. So two weeks before that buy... But will that extra 40 to 50 points you know, help you out in those few weeks? Um, and do you have enough players in round 13? Then you've got him for the rest of the year. And you know he's round 17 when they play. Uh, and probably a couple hundred K in price rises to go along with 50, a 50-odd 50 average. Is, is that worth it for you? And that's probably something you've got to have a think about. And especially if you're a head-to-head -head player, you've got to, I think you've got to think about getting him in. If that's how they're going to continue to play him going forward. But... We do know what's been happening with the Raiders. They haven't been playing too well lately. Will things change up? Obviously, they're really happy with what Starling's doing as to why he's getting big minutes. But yeah, just just keep that in mind uh, going forward, guys. Averillo has been incredible. Another 54, three goals. Just didn't just did a bit of everything. You know, 33 in base there. A couple of turnover tackles. It's perfect. What, what, what more can you want from him there? And, and will he keep continue in that seven role where he gets that big the big kick meters? Then it may do. And and he's you know. Turns out it's going to be a keeper in the centers, which is crazy. So, what well on Tavrillo and anyone who still owns him? He's someone that I, I wish I end up holding on to over someone like Spencer Lanyu. But anyway, that's that. Uh, Katara in there with a decent score. Aikens with 51. So, 
exceeding whatever I thought he would do. I wish he did this last year. I just sort of think he's an option, but that is what it is. Anyone with Hopper got a 48, which is good. Hudson Young, 47 in only 39 minutes, which was yeah, annoying, but his PPM is incredible there. 30 tackles in 39 minutes is crazy. Um, Kotrick with a decent score, along with Meany, so both scoring a try. Adam Elliott, just yeah, not hitting the heights that we'd want from him. Definitely sell him. Uh, Chris for 41. Not too much else to talk about. Obviously, Papali'i got sent off, so he, he, he loses 12 points there in the one hit, and he was scoring really, really well with 46 in that 30 minutes leading into that point. So there's that there. Corey Horsburgh with 34 in his 31 minutes. So again, I wouldn't be jumping the gun with him. He's still got some money to lose. Renault Fatoni with 34 there. Um, again, one of those guys that a few people have been talking about as being a really good option this week. And you know, another one there where the minutes just change like that. Doesn't get the big minutes, and which means the, the lower score there. And that's going to stifle his money making. And when, if you're picking him up at about 500k, you're needing them to, you're wanting them to hit at least 45 average. And you know, that's going to hurt you a little bit there. White just hasn't been himself this year, unfortunately. Uh, see him out of an eye with 27. So again, a, a slightly lower score to go along with his 34 average. Um, Hodgson with 21 in his 35 minutes wasn't that great. Stimson with nine, uh, sorry, Stimson with four, and Simonson with nine. So, yeah, not too great if you're still holding on to Simonson, but you are you aren't looking for him to score too amazingly well. I don't imagine if you've uh, you've got him sitting there in your emergencies. All right, so the Sharks and Bunnies. So the Bunnies got out of this one okay. Sharks still can't win since uh, since moving on Johnny Morris. So tough one for them. <clears throat> All right, Arrow comes on and, and gets uh gets off the duck egg. I said he was. I saw he was uh saying that he, he finally doesn't have to be be nude on the buck on the bucks on the um on the end of season trip, which is good for him. Uh, yeah, we're sixty nine. But again, if you if you're having him now, he's been losing a lot of cash and not scoring very well. So not much to talk about with him. Damian Cook was sixty four in his eighty minutes, so it's good to see him get fifty tackles and five breaks. Which yeah, a solid. He has lost a fair bit of cash, but if you've got him, keep holding on. He'll uh, continue to do well. Walker with 62, so got a couple of tries. Try saver there, uh, and and back to back to his best, which is great to see. I saw someone in one of the Facebook groups have him on their emergencies and played uh, played Tyson Gamble over Walker. So that's yeah, well, well done. <laughs> um, Braley with 55, Reynolds 54, Karate nice score off the on the wing there. Um, who else we got? Tolman with a, a 47, so not the massive minutes that we were talking about last week. <clears throat> Townsend with a bit more control over the side, got 45 this week, so of course he has control over the team now and doesn't score as well as he did at the start when everyone had him, of course, when I didn't have him. Colin Matangi gets a try, but only 43, which is a bit annoying if you have him. Plenty of demerits there, 16 in demerits, which kills you. Kennedy, good to see him in the positives this time, not the negatives, but I think most people would have sold him. Moylan, if he's still holding him, got a 41, which is good. Um, there's just not a lot to talk about in this game, is there? No one really too important. Chambers is having an incredible season since he's come back. Down, back, back down to starting price, 228, and averaging 11.7. God, he will. Uh, Fafita comes back, plays 19 minutes. Nothing really too much to say. Gagai has had a few lower weeks in the last three. Which is annoying for him, but um, you know, still getting a line break and a try assist and still getting twenty is a bit sad. So I think he's still got to keep holding on to him, but just the shuffling around at the moment has been a bit annoying for for, for his owners, and obviously uh, he's telling me to wake up um, for his owners and and everyone else there. So yeah, a little bit annoying for Gags, but nothing too much you can do with that one. Uh, let's move on to the last one for our Saturday night games, and here it is. How many people were talking about getting rid of Crichton and Tedesco this week? Egg on the face on that one. That's, yeah. Two champions of fantasy and, and our game as well. And, and they're like, yeah, they've, they've lost it. They're gone. Yeah, two tries. 87 for, for Crichton and 80 for Tedesco with 10 tackle breaks. So welcome back to these guys. Um, yeah, Crichton averaging 61 for the year. I don't know if that's a sell, but anyway. And Teddy at 51. Yes, it's low, way lower than what he's at, been at, but why would you sell him at 500 and 50k or whatever he was. I think that's a very silly idea. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say on those guys. If you didn't have them this week, you probably missed out and, and lost a lot of rank. So that's that there. Drink water with a couple of tries in 69, which is good. Ikevalu keeps delivering, averaging 51. So Morris, yeah, Morris is averaging 60. Ikevalu comes in and averages 51. It's something to do with that. Uh, something to do with that wing, hey. Robson with 59. 
He's been all right this year. He's not getting the full 80, which is why he's not averaging over 50. Uh, Tupo and Radley, good to see them get scores in the 50s. If you're holding Rads, you can keep going now, but obviously he had a couple of line breaks and a try assist, so um, probably inflated these stats a little bit. If you brought in Tamalolo this week, you still got 64 minutes, which you're happy with, but just not a lot uh, in terms of his attacking stats. Only two tackle breaks and an offload for 149 metres. So um, a lower game if you're you know, thinking of what Jason normally does. So I think you're happy with the minutes and you go from there. Holmes with a nice 50 again, just, just underneath that, that top tier. Lockie Lamb with 48, of course he gets that when we don't have him in our side again. Um, he's just scoring, outscoring Walker there and doing a lot more of the, the general in-play kicking, which is probably annoying for Walker owners, which we'll talk about in a sec. Joey Manu with 39, a try-saver and three turnover tackles, which is great. So saved his score a little bit. Still not one of the top centers, which is annoying since I picked him up. Um, Tommy Gilbert off the bench is going to be an interesting one. He is 434k though, so probably a bit too expensive to, to pick him up, especially off the bench. If he starts to get an 80-minute roll, then I can see him scoring really, really well, around that 50 average at least. Uh, but until then, let's just uh, wait on him there. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about Walker now. So 33, did pick up a try. Just not a lot in terms of the, the kicking in general play. 10 tackles for four misses. Just, just bits and pieces. Running the ball a bit, which is good, but 33, he's made 308k already, averaging 48 for the season. Do we think he continue can, can continue averaging that? I'm not sure if he can. But I still think he's going to be one of those guys that's going to have a, a monster game where he gets a 70 or 80 and then a bunch of games in the 30s, and, and those 30s are going to annoy you. So I think leading up to round 13, you can probably hold him until then um, and just see how his scores go over the next few weeks because you wouldn't want to miss out on a 70 or 80 when, when the majority of people have him. Uh, but he's someone that you could potentially move on uh, to another keeper and use that 308k that you've made from him for someone else, I think. Uh, Tupanua was a slightly annoying game for him. Obviously... Yeah, four missed tackles there, had had a sin bin, so missed out in 10 minutes. Just a just a, just not a perfect game for him. And I, I think you can continue to hold him at 524k. When he's someone that you can get to your 50 to 60 at 524k, I think you just got to keep holding on. It's just a bit of a an off game, obviously, with the sin bin and everything there. All right, so Butch off the bench has a lower game this week. I, I should have looked at how many people picked him up after these uh, massive 70 tackles last week, but that's that there. Uh, Talke Aho with 25 in his 35 minutes, so... Yeah, wow. Why is he getting 35 minutes? I didn't know. I didn't get to watch this one, obviously, with the with the wedding. But um, yeah, what a fall from grace, old tax. Old tax. Um, it's really all I've got to say. Felt no amazing try this week. Kieran off the bench. Hess with 16 minutes. Yeah, one of those games for the Cowboys. Actually, you're in the in the fight on this one, from what I looked at in the in the highlights there. So good to see Roosters getting a win. For all my Roosters fans, yeah, you're right. Um, the Cowboys are coming to more, can we? So that's that one, guys. Um, there's the, the three games for Saturday night. We'll jump into our Sunday games video as well. But I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Have a great day.